Hey there and welcome to my first video of 2022. I am going to be doing something a bit new with these videos going forward. Um, that is to say as long as I actually continue to do these videos. Um, I haven't been very productive on this channel and every video I put out I tend to apologise for not being productive. So I have decided to do a rundown each month of not just video games that I enjoy playing but other hobbies that I also enjoy that I've been kind of slacking off with really um, just to try and encourage me to be more productive and make better use of my spare time after I finish work of an evening. I'm working from home with everything that's going on in the world right now so trying to have that separation of home time and work time and encouraging me to spend that time more wisely doing what I actually enjoy and so because this video is likely to be a bit longer than usual without further ado let's get started. So I've been slacking off somewhat over the past 12 months in terms of what books I've been reading. I used to be a complete and utter bookworm. It's all I ever did with my spare time was read books. Um, and for whatever reason, I've just kind of fallen off the past few years. I've read some graphic novels and things which are quite quick to read. I can get through some graphic novels in a couple of nights or so. But in terms of actual books, sitting down with either my Kindle or a physical book, I haven't done that for quite some time, so uh, for Christmas this year I actually asked for um, a copy of this book, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, and that was after watching the show on TV. I really wanted to see what the differences were between the book and the show. The book is actually much calmer than the show. Uh, the show is much more graphic and depressing and aggressive than the book is, which I guess it's TV so they need to do it that way. I was quite surprised how um, the show really adhered to the book. Uh, I thought it would be made more dramatic just because it was on TV but I was quite surprised with how many points in the show were actually covered during the book. Um, you know, I, th I thought a lot of it would be kind of made up just for the, the drama and the glorification of it really but um, I really enjoyed it. I think if anyone has watched the show and has got an interest in what the actual original book was like, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, it's certainly not as depressing a read as the show is depressing to watch. It was a really tough show to watch, but very enjoyable. And if you've not seen it, I would recommend just not necessarily when you're in a really, really bad mood or a really, really good one, because you'll probably come out after an episode feeling really cross and angry with the entire world and fiction of that world um, but I would highly recommend and after finishing that book I went on to read um, or start reading at least um, this monster of a book um, which is Algareth the Sorcerer by David and Lee Eddings and I apologize for the reflection there um, as you can see this is a monster at about 800 pages long and I'm about 250 pages in so far I am enjoying it. I do tend to like fantasy. That's my, my favourite genre, so I'm really enjoying it so far. Not without its issues. It's kind of got some issues with the way it addresses different races and women. Um, but it's not too in your face, and it's certainly not enough that would put me off reading the rest of the book. I don't know how long it will take me to finish it. Um, I've probably been reading a couple of weeks and as I say yeah about 250 pages in so you know maybe the next few weeks to a month and I should have it finished but yeah I'm enjoying it so far and it's been really nice to get back into a fantasy world especially one that I've not read anything in before um, my understanding is or certainly how it comes across in the book is that there are a lot of different books in this universe but this is the first one that I've read and I am enjoying the characters even though as with any fantasy, it's hard to keep track of the different races and names of people, but yes, I will see how my thoughts pan out when I finish it. In terms of general crafts this month, I've done a couple of things. I had a Animal Crossing jigsaw, the 500 piece jigsaw for Christmas, which I actually started and finished in an evening, <laughs> which I didn't really expect, I've got to be honest. Um, I can't obviously show the jigsaw off on camera, so I will a photo of it up 
in the video. I did the thousand piece version last year, which was really difficult because there was so much blue and green and everything looked the same. This one was much more straightforward, obviously with me having finished it in an evening, but it's still just the cutest little jigsaw and you get a little poster of the jigsaw. Actually, it's not quite so little, um, but you get a poster along with a jigsaw that you could put up if you wanted to, which I'm probably not, but I'm definitely going to keep the poster somewhere. I also treat myself to the Lego bonsai tree for Christmas. It's something that I've been eyeing up for a while and it actually came up on sale uh, just before Christmas so I decided to get it and put it away for myself. I was a little bit disappointed with how quickly I actually managed to put it together. It only took me a couple of hours and it's a lovely piece which I've got here. I will try and lift it up and if you hear me start cursing it's because I've dropped it on the floor. Um, but it is very very pretty. Here it is. Um, I haven't done the spring blossom leaves as yet. They are um, still to be done but I quite like these green ones for the time being um, but yeah the whole thing took me about a couple of hours to do which for the price point seemed quite quick um, I didn't really expect to finish it that quickly but it was an enjoyable build um, I certainly enjoyed making it I would have just liked it to be maybe a little more complex just to have taken a little bit of extra time but otherwise it looks adorable in my living room I got into a new hobby quite early last year, which is wargaming and mini painting. And I never thought I'd hear myself say those words in all honesty. I've always been a big board game fan, but the thought of actually playing a skirmish game on a table and especially actually painting plastic miniatures was never something that would have crossed my mind, I don't think. Um, it's something that my husband got into doing and he'd mentioned that he thought I'd like it and I did try one small um, goblin which I'll, I'll take a, a photo of and yes, I forgot to, to bring it here um, I'll, I'll put that in the, the video um, I painted a little goblin with contrast paints and it went better than I expected which I think kind of gave me the bug um, I did him and then left it for a while and then I decided to buy myself the starter night haunt kit from Games Workshop. I painted all of those models up. Didn't really like the way that they'd suggested I paint them so I actually tweaked them to better suit how I liked them to look and that was kind of game over for me really because I ended up buying I think all of the night haunt models after that. I bought copies of the Mortal Realms magazines as well as some individual figures you know, directly from, from different stores that sell Games Workshop gear and I've painted quite a number of those so far. Again I will put pictures on display so you can see some of them. I also painted the Iron Golem army for Warcry and my husband and I have had many a game of that so far with predominantly losing I believe or maybe we're about 50 50 maybe I think he lets me win because I'm absolutely atrocious I have no strategic skill whatsoever I can barely remember the rules in all honesty but it's really fun and enjoyable to get these little minis that I know I've painted myself out on the table and we've got so much games workshop stuff to build and paint and probably another five years worth of work let alone any new games that come out but i'm really enjoying it i haven't done anything this month um, but i just wanted to mention it as something that i got into just to show off some of the things that i have been doing and i'm sure you'll see more of that over the coming months so let's get started with video games because there are a huge number of these to get through Firstly, Apex Legends, which if anyone's watched these videos probably absolutely no shock whatsoever. Um, that's just a staple in our household. Every weekend my husband and I will play that together. Um, we don't tend to play it often during the week unless there's an event on. We do tend to play every Friday and Saturday for too many hours. Um, I'm still atrocious. I don't know why, but I don't seem to get any better. But it's, it's just one of those. I still enjoy it. I still really enjoy the arenas mode as well. And I probably do because I am actually better in arenas than Battle Royale mode. I do tend to find that the events are quite difficult to finish in some cases. 
um, the first week of the event that's just finished, which I can't recall the name of, some water theme. Anyway, um, the first week was to do 50 knockdowns in a week. And bear in mind that I can do barely five knockdowns a night and we play for two nights a week. I am going to be absolutely nowhere near ever, ever being able to finish the um, event badge for that event. But the last week was sensible. It was do 5,000 damage, which I actually managed to do, um, which is, again, probably some sort of miracle for me. But yeah, some of the event challenges can be quite tough when you're not particularly great at the game. But that's my only complaint. Otherwise, it's um, just apex for the win for us, really. And it's still free and it's still amazing. We have been going back to Overwatch on occasion. I haven't really streamed myself uh, playing Overwatch just with some of the things going on at the moment. Just haven't really felt very appropriate, but it still feels so good to play that game. It's so much fun. It's just such a shame with everything going on there right now. Um, again, we've mostly been playing when there's been events on. Um, the New Year event is on at the moment. So we've been playing to get those skins. Oh, it's just such a shame. Um, I love that game. Who knows what's going to happen with Overwatch 2, but we'll see. Next on my list is Animal Crossing New Horizons and the new Happy Home Paradise DLC. I had the DLC for Christmas and just haven't stopped playing it since. I love all the new items and customization options that they've put into the game. I actually really liked the Happy Home Paradise game that came out on 3DS. I know it kind of had mixed reviews, it didn't really get um, too warm a welcome, I guess, but I love this version in New Horizons. It's like a completely different game. And as I say, the, the new items, are, they look great. They're a lot more modern than the traditional items that are in kind of standard Animal Crossing and uh, in the New Horizons game. I still play that every day without fail, even if it's 15 minutes or so, just to kind of run around and see what's in the shop and. Um, you know, plant the money tree and all the things that you can kind of do on a daily basis. But that is still absolutely my staple game, and uh, it's just one I can't can't see myself getting bored with anytime soon. Really, um, it's just really relaxing to play of an evening, even if it is just those 15 minutes or so, just to to chill out. It's quite nice to have that familiarity in a in a game, really. And I I'm up to about 50 houses. I believe in the DLC and I know there are some people who have done far more than that. Um, there's someone in a, a Facebook group that I'm in who said they've done 140 or so which is absolutely crazy. Um, I thought I'd done a lot with 50 but very much enjoying it and I think if you've not picked up that DLC yet for the game definitely definitely pick it up. It's about £15 I think on offer in the UK which it comes up quite often on offer so I would highly recommend it. I picked up Lego Builders Journey on the Epic Store when the Christmas sale was on. You could get a £10 off voucher so I managed to buy it for £5.99. Um, I enjoyed it, it looks really really nice. The overarching story is, is kind of heartbreaking. Um, I maybe not recommend buying it full price. I finished the whole game in about two, two and a half hours. I did have some niggles with how it controlled. I wish there was a different button for picking up and rotating and putting the blocks down. I did find myself a lot of the time actually going to put a block somewhere and either dropping it or just misplacing it and that uh, got a bit frustrating in parts. Also bearing in mind it is two hours long, I did find some of the puzzles outstayed their welcome in some of the areas, which was a bit frustrating. Overall, I did enjoy it. I would give it a light recommendation with, as I say, probably buy it on sale. I do think it's a bit steep at full price of £15.99 for the amount of game there actually is there, but it does look lovely and the soundtrack's cute and it's fairly easy. There were a couple of puzzles that were a little bit complex here and there. It took me a couple of goes to figure out what was going on, but overall, um, yeah, not too bad at all. My husband and a friend of ours got into playing quite a lot of cooperative games last year, um, one of which that has stuck the landing was Seven Days to Die. I didn't see that game when it was in early development. I only actually saw it last year. 
in its current form as such. We started playing around the uh, time of the last big update that they've put out. Uh, I'll have to apologise for the old footage that I'm putting up here. We're on around day 42, I believe, in the game at the moment. And the footage I've got is from day 7 because we haven't played for a little while and I forgot to record the last session, so sorry. Um, we've moved out of the base, actually, that I'm showing in this footage. We've got uh, a much swankier place now. Um, I really like survival games and this one is a bit bonkers and a bit crazy. Um, it can be really atmospheric and tense in parts and the uh, day 7 events that occur when you get raided by the hordes of zombies can be pretty hardcore or certainly the one that we did last was just a disaster. They didn't manage to get to the base but they destroyed pretty much all of the defences probably why we haven't gone back to it for a little while because it's going to be a lot of work to to sort the absolute carnage that that happened out there it comes up on offer quite regularly i think um on a couple of the 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 sites that sell these games you can get it for about five pounds and it's definitely worth that we've played it for hours and hours and hours i'd probably not play it by myself but certainly as a cooperative game it's great and it's been so much fun to explore that world definitely a bit more hardcore than other survival games i've played you know terraria things like that um not quite as tense as zombie hordes but definitely definitely worth your time if you like survival games another game that i picked up recently was mini motorways it's made by the same people who made Mini Metro, and it's very much in the same vein. You get um, a coloured base and a coloured house, and you have to link the two services together. And as the game progresses, you get more and more colours to link together. It's one of those games that's really simplistic, in essence. And then when you start playing it and you think you've got all these beautiful routes and everything planned out, and then a random colour will appear um, in the middle of your pink run, a yellow will appear and then you've got to link it to your yellow run and then it just becomes traffic carnage and you end up losing the game. It's one of those games I tend to go back to if I've got a spare 10-15 minutes just to see if I can get a better score on a level I've already done or to go forward and do levels that I haven't done before. It's quite chill other than towards that end point when it's just, there's vehicles everywhere everywhere's gridlocked. I don't quite know where I've made the mistake in the level or whether it's just that's how it's going to go but quite a cheap buy and if you like Mini Metro if you've played it before it's exactly the same game in essence in terms of what you need to do and I'm really enjoying having some new levels to play in that style. So the next game that I tried out I actually tried through Game Pass which was probably just as well because I had been looking at it to buy and then as soon as I played it through Game Pass I realised I was probably right not to because I probably wouldn't go back to it again and that is a game called Townscaper. I probably would struggle to call it a game in all honesty. It's very much more an art piece for me I would say. You can play it as a game in as much as there are achievements to do. Um, so you start off basically with a very small island and you can just build out from there in whatever means you see fit. You get different coloured um, sort of boxes that you can use which determines the colour of the houses that you put down and you can expand out. You can have one square houses or you can build these huge towers with spires on. Um, as I say, when you build, you get achievements for doing specific things like I had an achievement for putting a spire on the house for the first time or just putting a house in a particular place or putting it out on its own in the middle of the sea and different things like that so if you wanted to to gamify it i guess you could go through and play that game and look through the achievements and, and go through it that way it is one of these chilled out relaxing games that you could just tap at and, and build out the island for me it's probably not something I would go back to, I think I probably need more structure in a game I guess, but I can see the appeal, I can definitely see the appeal. It's a really nice looking game and it is just that, that chilled out vibe and the artwork's really cute as the island progresses and they put in the little 
flower pots by the houses and the ladders down to the sea. And it's really, really nice looking, but as I say, just not one for me personally that I would go back to, I don't think. Another game that I played on Game Pass actually through to completion was one called The Gunk. I believe the intention is for it to come out on Steam at some point, but at the moment I think it's only available on Game Pass. It's relatively shorter, about four and a half hours long. I think it would have been slightly longer had I found everything there was to find. There were some areas I, I know for a fact that I missed um, just because I was kind of progressing through the level rather than trying to get some hidden materials here and there. It's a fun game. It's very strange. At first when I started playing it I thought it was going to be quite a calm and sedate platformer which it is for the most part. You can uh, collect materials throughout the world. It's, it is a bit of a collector on in, in that way but you can collect materials in the world. You solve puzzles to get across from, from area to area. For me there was some very bizarre bits of going from incredibly calm to incredibly stressful all of a sudden. The combat didn't feel great, so when all of a sudden out of nowhere there was just this huge um, bit of combat that you needed to get through, it was just a bit jarring. It was never particularly difficult, but just quite jarring. I had one of the boss fights glitch at one point as well, which I thought was going to stop me from finishing the game, but I ended up managing to reload an earlier save and had to get back to that point again and, and do it again, which was a bit frustrating. So yeah, a bit of a mixed bag really. It just seemed a little bit off kilter in terms of its pacing, I guess. One thing for me as well with it was that there were certain parts that kind of overstayed their welcome. The physics of getting rid of, of the gunk in the levels, um, it looks great. There's a couple of bits in particular where you just have to grind up this huge, big, long path, just getting rid of the gunk in front of we you, and it just felt down. like it took forever. It wasn't enjoyable, it just, what would you do? just you seemed really build? tedious I'm and kind of a bit of a filler moment, really. I, I think it was meant to be kind of a big dramatic piece leading up to kind of the end of the game, but it just felt a bit back. flat for me. I did enjoy it, I don't know how much Otherwise, it costs full price, I'm afraid. Um, I will try and find that out and, and include it here, but if you've got Game Pass and you've not tried it, I would say to try it out if you like 3D platformers. It is fun. I did find the voice acting was, was good. The music's great and it does, it looks beautiful. Um, one of the characters in the game I found really, really irritating. Um, and there's pretty much constant dialogue between your character and this other character and Whoa. they really, okay. really grated on me yeah, towards the end of the game, I've got to be honest. Um, so that was, that was a bit unfortunate, but for the most part, I really liked it. Um, whether I would recommend a purchase, I'm not sure, but if you've got Game Pass, I would say to give it a go, especially seeing as, you know, you can complete it, you're looking at somewhere maybe four and a half, five hours, and then you'll be done. An Another game that we played cooperatively last year and this month as well, obviously, which is why it's in this video, is Warhammer Vermintide 2. Um, we kind of fall off this game for a while and then go back to it and play it pretty much constantly for a few nights in a row. We ended up going back to it after playing some Back to Blood last year, which I enjoyed, but it's not without its issues. I'm sure we'll go back to it at some point. We played that through Game Pass and I kind of wish I'd just bought it outright so I don't have to play for Game Pass anymore if I actually wanted to go back to it. But Game Pass has its own advantages with all of the other games on there, but that's besides the point. Um, Vermintide 2 is just so much fun. I love that universe. I loved the first game. The characters are great. Salt Spire, the voice actor for Salt Spire, who I'm not sure of the name, I'll, I'll include it here, I'll, I'll have a look for it. He just deserves an Oscar for that performance. He just makes me laugh so much every time I hear him scream in the voice lines. We've been playing a lot of the new Chaos Wastes that they introduced and they're a lot of fun, they can be super tough. And also the Weaves, which again can be ridiculous <laughs> the, uh, the later you, you get into those levels. But it's still so much fun. I love Carillion, she's just the best. I play her all the time. Carillion's ranged attacks just really suit 
how I tend to snipe off the special characters and, and her ultimate when you can just press F and a ton of people just fall over. Um, definitely best suits my playstyle as someone that's not particularly competent. Um, but yeah, she's uh, she's just my girl and she's great and I love her. Um, but Salt Spire is great and my husband spent hard-earned money getting the uh, cosmetic pig that sits on his head, which is truly, truly disturbing, but also really good fun. So I definitely recommend if you've not played Vermintide 2 and you do like Left 4 Dead and you like Black for Blood, it's very, very good and the bots are actually decent in Vermintide 2. They actually do things as opposed to Back for Bloods which just spin in a circle and jump up and down and I really hope they fix them sometime soon because I really want to go back and play it again but definitely a big thumbs up for Vermintide 2. It's one of our games that we go back to quite regularly to play together. Last but not least on my list is a hugely expensive £2 game called Vampire Survivors. It is completely not the usual sort of game that I would play at all. I don't really go for twin stick shooters. Um, I'm not a huge rogue-like slash light person other than Hades, which is one of the best games ever made, obviously. Um, but Vampire Survivors is a bit of a unique take on it in that it's not a twin stick shooter. All you do in that game is move. Um, you move and avoid the characters coming to attack you on screen, and then you can um, get pickups throughout the level by earning either experience, collecting these blue orbs that appear all over the ground, or you can kill bosses to upgrade your weapons that way. It starts off quite slow. Um, the ramp up to it getting interesting is probably somewhere from between 5 and 10 minutes into each level. I've only survived up until I think around 23 minutes so far and I know it goes a bit bonkers at half an hour. So I'm not far off, I'm getting there. Um, there are some permanent upgrades that you can spend in-game currency on as well. Um, again, as you play each level, you pick up gold and then that gold can be used for permanent upgrades or for unlocking different characters in the game as well. For £2, I really can't recommend it enough, even if it, you don't think it's going to be your thing, because I definitely didn't think it would be mine. I was kind of interested after I watched someone else play it on stream and thought, for £2, you know, why not? And I haven't been able to stop thinking about it, honestly. I can't wait to just give it another go and see if I can actually improve on my time from the last game and see what other weapons I can unlock. There's definitely some weapons that seem to work better than others, but figuring out that combination of, of what you can pick when you actually get enough experience to, to pick your next weapon or pick your next upgrade is really something that I'm enjoying experimenting with, which I never thought would be the case with a game like this. So if you've got a spare £2, then I would definitely, definitely say pick it up. It's in early access at the moment and it sounds like uh, the developers got big plans for where they want it to go and it's so so much fun so that's everything for me for this video uh, this may have gone a little long um, i have decided this time to include some clips of the games that i've been playing instead of just the little um, icons that i used to put in the videos if that's going to make this too long then i will cut back on that and just kind of do it how i used to do it but i'll see how it turns out um, and then maybe for February I will do it differently. I am taking part in Special Effects Game Blast the weekend commencing the 25th of February. I'm not quite sure what games I'll be playing or how long I'm playing for. I'm definitely doing over 24 hours, though no, not one 24 hour sitting. I'll, I'll probably aim to do at least 24 hours over that full weekend. I will share my Tiltify a fundraising link for anyone who would like to donate that would be fabulous thank you so much and do come and join the streams while i'm streaming it's always great to have the company and that encouragement and special effect is an amazing cause they uh, help people with disabilities to play games again when they you know, may not be able to otherwise by um, adaptive setups and um, adaptive controls and things like that they're just they're an amazing charity and i can't wait to get back out volunteering for them as soon as we're able to with uh, the current times um, so as I say that's everything for me thank you so much for watching um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you'd like to see me uh, talk over um, any games um, if you'd like to suggest any games that you'd like me to play um, 
it's always good to hear from you, especially at the moment where everyone's so kind of isolated and uh, it'll just be the encouragement I need to carry on making these. So again, thanks very much and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye for now.